can't believe I'm videotaping this, but uh -huh, I'm backing up the trailer. They loaded well. Sheesh, wasn't even a flood. Good Tuesday morning. If you remember yesterday when I was feeding, I was a little bit concerned that this pen was short, some feeder space. Uh, I talked a lot about feeder space and how important it is for every you to be able to eat at the same time because sheep just think every meal is their last meal. If it's a, a, all a little bit tight, uh, what can happen is the weaker ewes, the weaker ewes just won't get their share. And when that happens, that bottom end of your group will just become less and less and less productive of an animal. They haven't even been bred yet, so they're, uh, they're just ewe lambs born last March. So it's very important, they are still growing, so they need exactly what my ration says every single you needs. And as soon as you start jipping one, because the bigger ones, the more aggressive ones take their share, then I'm gonna start having problems. I better take some time this morning and switch them around, see if that works. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to start splitting up the group and finding pens, finding pen logistics that work better. Okay, I think I figured out the easiest way to, I, I had the pen screwed up for numbers, so I think the only thing I can do is this lactating pen has a ton of room. It's actually, I gave them way more room that they needed. So what I'm gonna do is make that pen a little bit smaller and combine the N2 pens, because they are the same group, I just separated them for room. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna make that, this pen a bit smaller, their pen a bit bigger, and then that would give, that would give those ewe lambs the whole pen and that would be oodles of room. So I am going to do that right now. So basically these two back pens here, this is the same group. I just divided the pen in half to give them a little more space. I'm probably gonna shut this gate here. There's a gate across there if you can see it. And I'm gonna shut it to about here. So these guys don't really need this little bit of space, but this would be enough that these girls could go together and that's enough room. And then that would free up that whole pen for that 120 ewes that are, that are over there. Hello. You two are beautiful. You're beautiful. So as you can see here, um, these are all portable, these little dividers, and that helps keep the lambs, if they do go in the bunk, they can't get around and get in the wrong pen. So I use these religiously, uh, so it just happens that that was at the right spot, which is nice. these guys back with their friends. Okay guys. Come on. Come on. Nice. Excellent. And now I'm going to let these ladies have this whole pen and that'll be a ton of room for them probably too much actually
I could literally do this all day. Okay, now that we got the, I was gonna say, now that we got the jumps out, which I don't, they are, they are ridiculous this morning. Oh my God. Anywho, now that they're all moved and getting situated in your new place, I'm gonna run back to the office and make a completely new feed sheet based on where they are now. It's not gonna change a whole lot. Okay, I plugged in all my new rations and I changed those pens around. There we go, new feed sheets. Okay, I'm gonna give it a go, I'm gonna feed them. I got the new feed sheets where they're supposed to be. I'll spare you the details of me feeding, but what I might do is put the camera on this pen when I go to feed them, just to see the difference between yesterday and today to see if that made the difference and to make sure that back pen, to make sure they have enough room. I think they do. That used just being difficult because there's like a quarter of a pen at the very end. <laughs> they aren't very smart. Dude. Okay, so it's much better. Lots and lots of room now. There's no one crawling over each other. They do that when you feed, but that's just sheep. They only needed room for maybe three sheep. And there's probably room there, there. So this is where the gate was, and there's only three sheep that we're eating on this side. So they have all this extra room now. Which they don't really need, but... Just to give them all a chance to eat, I think that's the best solution. Now, when I feed these guys, I have to make sure they have enough room. They will next week for sure when they get sheared, but I just have to make sure, because these guys are pregnant, so I... They will, they will just get bigger and wider, so they're gonna need more room as the weeks go by. So these are all things I just have to observe and change. Nothing stays the same in this barn, ever. I ran out of gas. It worked out well. The other group has, has spread out really nice too, so that's the back where they weren't, and they're spread out all the way to the front. So, I think we got our feed bunk situation figured out. Chores are done and it's lunchtime and I'm starving. So, I'm gonna see what Mark is up to. Gonna stop for lunch. What time is it? It's afternoon actually. I decided last minute I'm going to weigh these market lambs today. If there's not enough to make a load, I won't bother. But if there's even maybe 10, then it's probably worth driving this week and then missing next week and doing it the following week because I forgot next Wednesday I have a function in Toronto so I'm not gonna be around. So guys, we're gonna weigh you. Okay, I have the whole system set up and for those that have seen this a million times, I apologize. For those that are new to the channel though, uh, this whole this whole system is called the handling system. Now the one in my other barn is always set up but this one I have to I have to put up every time I use it because it's on the center alley. And the center alley is where I do all my work, where I have like bales, so I need to get in and out with a tractor. I just took a few minutes just to set this up. Uh, this is called tub, and it's got a door that actually pushes and shoves the sheep in this way. And then of course this is a scale. The scale is hooked up uh, by a cable when I do that. 
my Gallagher. My Gallagher has all the lamb information from when it was born and from every time I've weighed these. I've weighed these guys a couple times now. So they're all in there and every time you scan the ear tag, this is an RFID scanner, every time you scan the tag, it goes in there, gives me all the data. If they are 105 pounds or over, I will open this door. Bam, and they will deflect into this pen. And this pen is where I will ship out of tomorrow. If they are under that, I will lift the guillotine gate. Like so. And they go straight through. And then I have a gate across the end there. And I will just open up that door when we're all done and let the, the lambs back in their pen to grow for another week or two before I weigh them again. Okay, got a good start on it. So as you can tell, I've got some in the chase here, some in the tub, and some in waiting, and then the rest in the pen. So this one is the first one that met the weight criteria. So it was 111 pounds. So if I waited two weeks, it would have been so heavy. So I'm going to take the gun here, scan, Scan. There we go. So its tag showed up here. Right there, that's its ID tag. Um, it's 111 pounds. It was a triplet, a ram lamb, born June 14th. So a good June, July, August, September, October, October. Four months old, just over. Uh, and it's gaining about 0 0.87, 0 0.8 a day, which is up for my farm is about average. Well, it's probably actually pretty good. So that is the data on that. So I'm going to open this and deflect it into this pen. Just like so. There you go, bud. There you go. There you go. That's it. There. Okay, well I wanted 10 and I got 12. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, I'm gonna put these guys back in their pen. Okay, where you go, guys? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Turn your head. There you go. No, no, no. Follow. That's it. Come on. There. The good part is uh, there was a ton around that 95 to 103 range so in two weeks I should have a good full load so I'll take a half load this week uh, just knowing that it was a timing thing and not necessarily uh, the fact that they'd be ready because there would have been a lot ready next week but they'll be even more ready the week after so I'm just gonna clean up here and probably do some office work and call it a day Windy. Those <laughs> are socks. Good Wednesday morning. Back in the barn. Chores again. Those lambs that I weighed yesterday will have to get taken to the auction barn. Trying to get there a little bit early today. I have that sheep convention tomorrow and Friday. So I have to leave in good time today.
hours and now I'm uh, running to grab Mark. He, he took my telehandler to uh, start spreading manure down the road. He's going to do the field that we that I just showed you some video on that we were combining on the weekend. He's going to spread manure there. It hasn't been done in a... We try to spread manure on the fields every three years. Uh, so it seems like he's spreading a lot, but we're actually... It has to... Some people spread every single year and we do ours uh, every third year and it just matches our rotation. He's down at his dad's chicken barns and we spread all their manure as a part of our system too. So we have a lot of manure. That's why we get so behind. If, if any wheat gets taken out of rotation due to weather or poor springs or poor planting, then it changes our whole system and it's, it can be frustrating um, because the, the, the chicken operations a, a totally, it's not our operation and they rely on us to take the manure away. Uh, but when we can't get the manure away, then it's, it's just really stressful. So I better go get them. That's the beast. It's a tebby manure spreader. It's about, it's likely just about eight or 10 years old now. It's, it's amazing. It's a great spreader. So this is, uh, this is one of the farms that we take the manure from. And the manure storage is straight back there. I'm not gonna drive in that. Manure Uber! Yeah. <laughs> you ride. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, I used to cheat and use our backup camera, but apparently um, that might be a recall issue and we haven't taken the truck back forever. So I'm getting a little better at backing up the trailer. Not a whole lot. Let's see what the damage is. I'm getting all right. Okay, so for all those that that were asking me last time if my chains are crossed, they are always crossed. I just leave them crossed on the trailer. So then when I hook it up, it's always where it needs to be. So chains are crossed. Trailer lights. Hard to do with one hand, as is everything. Ooh. Lights, lights, 
lights. Lights. Good. Thanks for your help. You're so cute. I can't believe I'm videotaping this, but uh -huh, I'm backing up the trailer. Usually much better, but not with an audience. I'm just gonna pretend you're not here. There we go. Let's see what the damage is. Oh, terrible. Terrible. It's a redo. Let's see what that looks like. <gasps> Look at that. Perfect. Square. Take two. Got the trailer backed up nice. The ramp, which saves marriages, uh, that is a homemade ramp that we made. And then just my handling system that you saw yesterday. And a little mini chute. And the pen. So I'm going to just load these guys. Hopefully I can do it by myself. They have to be in a good mood, but we will see. Loaded well. Sheesh, wasn't even a flood. So we're nicely on the road on my way. It's about a 35 to 40 minute drive to the stockyards where these guys get sold. The, the lambs on my sheep farm are destined for either two things. Uh, the ram lambs will go for, typically go for meat. Uh, they get bought at the, at the auction house here uh, by buyers basically and the buyers are there representing processors for the most part from Toronto and uh, it, there's a big demand for lamb in Toronto in that area uh, likely the most demand in Canada so that is probably where most of my rams go uh, the, the females on the farm, I either I either keep them back as replacements of the ewes that I have in the barn, like I, I kept 128 out of that March group. So that's pretty much got me fine for this year. It's about a, I keep anywhere from 20 to 30% replacement ewes every year. And even more if, if I feel like it's gonna be a year of heavy culling or any issue, if I've had issues and uh, some have died. So that's kind of, I either keep my lambs for uh, they get, they get shipped for meat or they stay back as replacement lambs. That's kind of how the, the way the farm works. That's kind of the synopsis of, of what we do. I try to ship every other week, um, just depending on if there was lambs ready. So I am gonna sign off now. Thanks for watching guys. Friday, I'm hoping Romy and Ryan will let me take some footage of their brand new sheep farm. It's a freaking dream farm. So. Um, I've been dying to get in there and vlog it, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Take care.